We have June of Ought 7, page 8. Question 42. In the diagram below, scaled vectors represent the momentum of each of the two masses, A and B, sliding towards each other. And they're on a frictionless horizontal surface. So if we look at the diagram, we notice that mass A has a large vector, which means a large momentum, and poor mass B's got this little puny vector trying to fight it. Well, vectors are drawn to scale, and we can use geometry to find the resultant. So we would take A, subtract from it whatever B is, and the resultant would be A wins. Not as strong. B is going to slow it down, but A is going to win. So now we go read the question. Which scale vector best represents the momentum of the system after the masses collide? Well, it's not one or three. Four looks to be about the same size as A was. So it's going to be less than that. B is going to have some effect on that. So the resultant answer would be two. Question 43. A pendulum is pulled to the side and released from rest. So you got a pendulum, you pull it over to the side, and then you release it from rest. Now let's think about it. The pendulum will swing downwards, get down to the bottom of the path, and then its momentum will carry it back upwards. So that's what's going to happen to the pendulum. So let's read the question. Which graph best represents the relationship between the gravitational potential energy? Well, gravitational potential energy is the weight, mg, times the height. The gravitational potential energy of the pendulum and its displacement from its point of release. Well, displacement from its point of release is talking about its height. So it starts here, so it has its maximum height through its maximum potential energy. And uh, it'll start getting closer and closer to zero potential energy. But then it'll start gaining potential energy again. So let's go see if we can find that graph. And sure enough, it's choice four. It's always nice knowing what the graph's going to go look like and then finding it. Question 44. Which graph best represents the relationship between the power required to raise an elevator and the speed at which the elevator rises? So the relationship between power and speed. Well, we've got to find us a formula to help us with this one. As it turns out, it's down at the bottom. Power is equal to work divided by time. Work is force times distance, so power is equal to force times distance divided by time. And distance divided by time is velocity, or speed. So we'll use that variation of the equation, and we'll say that power is equal to force times velocity. Now the force uh, ends up being the weight of the elevator, and so uh, it looks like a direct relationship. As the speed increases, the power required increases. So if we've got power and speed, as we increase the speed, one, one, two, two, three, three, it's going to look like that. And there it is, choice one. Let's look at the others. Uh, less and less power as it goes faster and faster. That doesn't make any sense. The same amount of power as it goes faster and faster. That doesn't make any sense. And this is less power as it goes faster, and that doesn't make any sense. You reach a certain point where you go fast enough, it requires no power at all. Again, wrong answers. Question 45. Baryons may have a charges of. I can't tell you how many times I wish I knew the charges of a baryon. Very useful information. <laughs> at any rate, I don't know what any of that is. However, I remember that I have a classification of matter chart that has hadrons and leptons. And under the hadron category, we have uh, some baryons. And baryons have three quarks to them. Huh. And uh, let's go over and look at the quarks. That doesn't really help as much. We're really going to have to remember this. The leptons, the most famous of the leptons, let's go to the leptons, is the electron. Leptons, electron. 
So that would be a, an electron. The baryons uh, are the uh, proton and neutron, three quarks. Oh, and now it's coming back to me. So a, a baryon could be uh, um, uh, different kinds of quarks, uh, positive two-thirds, positive two-thirds, positive two-thirds, negative a third. So a proton is two ups and a down, positive two-thirds, positive two-thirds, minus one-third for total charge of one. And a neutron is two downs and an up, positive two-thirds and minus two-thirds for a charge of zero. So let's read the question again. Baryons may have charges of, well, we could certainly have a positive one. That would be the proton. Let's see. We got positive two-thirds, positive two-thirds, minus one-third. So somehow we've got to get to variations of this. Positive th four thirds. That would work if we had two ups. We had a baryon that had two ups. That would be possible. No, it's got to be three quarks. So that doesn't look like it would work. Minus one. So one, two, three. If we had a down, a strange, and a bottom quark. That would be a minus three-thirds, or a minus one. So that might be possible. Positive one, we've already decided was possible. Positive two. Um, a positive two-thirds, a positive two-thirds, and a positive two-thirds. Uh, that would give us a positive six-thirds, which would be positive two. So positive 2 is possible. Positive 3, uh, there's no way we're going to only use 3 of those and get all the way up to positive 9 thirds. So that can't be. Negative 2, uh, we got to use 3 of these, and our negatives are all minus 1 -third, so uh, we're not getting down to negative 2. So by process of elimination, the correct answer has got to be 3. And question 46. The slope of a graph of a photon's energy versus its frequency. So if we do a graph of energy versus frequency, we get some kind of a graph going here. Well, a graph is really just a division problem, energy divided by frequency, and the slope is simply represented by the change in y divided by the change in x, or simply the e value divided by the f value. So um, what is E divided by F equal to? Let's go look at our formula sheet. And this would be in the modern physics section. And it says that the energy of a photon is equal to HF. So we can write energy is HF. And so E divided by F would be equal to H. What is H again? Planck's constant. I knew that. And let's go see. Yep, there it is. Planck's constant is there. And let's pick that answer. We're happy with it. The mass of a photon, speed of light would be C, speed of light squared. Mass of a photon would be M. So it's got to be Planck's constant. Enjoy.